Welcome, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. We're covering operations on random variables, or in short, expectation. Under this topic, we cover the introduction. We'll go over the introduction, expectation, moments, function that give moments, transformation of random variables, and then we'll look at computer generation of a random variable. Today's lecture will focus on this video, we'll focus on the expectation, and specifically we'll cover what is expectation, expectation of a random variable, then expectation of a function of random variable, and then we'll conclude with conditional expectation. Expectation. What is expectation? Expectation is the name given to the process of finding the average when a random variable is involved. So in general, we say averaging, averaging, finding the average value. But when dealing with random variables, we call it expectation. We call it expectation of x, expected value of x, the mean of x, or statistical average of x. We also refer to that as x bar. So all these things refer to the same thing, expected value of x or the mean or average of x. Now, mathematically, you can find the expected value of the random variable x from its PDF, from the density function. You just scale by x, you give every value of x a weighted a weight equal to the density function, and then you integrate. So in fact, we are weighting the values with their probability. The expected value of x, which is x bar, it's the integration of the PDF scaled by x. So in the special case of having discrete random variable, the PDF will look like this. It's a summation. So if you want to find the expected value, you just going to replace this blue term here and take this summation with delta and substitute here. Luckily, delta with integration will, will have the shifting property. The shifting property means you're just going to get rid of the integration and the delta and replace all values of x with x sub i. So we have now two formulas. One is the general formula for if we have a continuous PDF. The special case is also covered here if we have a discrete PDF. So you can think of this as a special case of that. That's simply saying weight every value of x by its uh, probability, and then you get the expectation. So if something is highly probable, we'll get higher weight. Something is less probable, we'll get less weight. We're doing similarly here because integration over the density will simply give you the probability. So inside the box, we have these two formulas to define the expectation for the continuous and the discrete scenarios. Now, for symmetric PDF, if the PDF is symmetric, then you know that a symmetric function around A will be simply satisfying this equation. That's x plus A will have the same as the value of A minus x. That's if you have, for example, the following shape, and this is a, uh, we can write this is that this is the symmetric value a here is 100. So if you add x or subtract x, you get the same value. This is a symmetric example. So in that case, the expected value, without going through the integration or the calculation, it's expected to be a, the point of symmetry, which makes a lot of sense. So if the BDF is symmetric, we don't have to execute the integration. We can, by inspection, find the symmetry point to be the expected value. Let's take an example, an example of uh, coins in pockets. So the first row here shows you, we picked a few number of people, and, and, and um, we found that how many coins or how much is the amount of coins in their pockets. So we had 8 people with 18 cents, 12 people with 45 cents, and so on. So the question is, what is the expected value of the number of cents in people's pockets? Then this is a discrete example. So I, I recall the formula here, the formula for the expected value. And we're just going to do the substitution. We're going to scale the value, which is shown in red here, by its probability. So how do you find the probability? We can count the number of people. OK, so we can say the following. Uh, the number of people here, 5 plus 15, we have 20, 20, then we have 30 here, the total is 70. So counting the number of coins in people's pockets is going to be between 0 and 99 cents, assumingly, and then we found the expected value by scaling. So this is 
0.18 if you want things in dollars. So you divide by 100. And then here we have 8 over 90. So, so the total number of, we have here 30, and then we have here 50. That's 80. And then we have uh, 30 and, okay, we have 20. And then we have 50 here. This is 70. And 20, we have 90 in total. So uh, out of the 90 uh, in total, we can do the following. We can say that the probability of having 18 is 8 over 90. Then we have 12 over 90 and 28 over 90 and so on and so forth. If you take this substitute into the calculator, you get 0.632 dollars. So about 63 cents. So does this make sense? I mean, look at the numbers here. Um, maybe it, they do because the value is somehow in the mid-range and we have kind of symmetric uh, distribution. Okay, fantastic. Now, this is an example where we calculated the expected value of a discrete example. Let's move forward to maybe a continuous example. Now, in this practice, for example, it says find the mean of the exponential distribution. Finding the mean for the, ran for the exponential random variable, remember the exponential is a continuous scenario and it's given by the following function. So the PDF is given to us. So what do we have to do? Our job is to find the expected value. Now to find the expected value, we got to mult to scale by x and integrate. Exponential scaled by x will get kind of special integration. We can use integration appendices. What they tell you, for example, that x multiplied by exponential have the following answer. Okay, I'm doing it before um, beforehand because I know that if I am going to get the expected value, I have got to scale this by x and integrate. So how do we integrate x times exponential? We can recall this from the integration appendix. And for this to be true, a is a real or complex quantity. We have no problem with this. But we have to be a little bit careful here because this is a formula from the appendix. And the formula that we need here already have a. So we, we could get confused. These are totally different a's. So let's just change the formula from the appendix. I just got this from having a to c. So to go from here to here, we're having no problem. We're just um, changing the name of, of the variable. Just to avoid repeating a for different quantities. Now, for this, for the example in hand, we can do the following. So I will take this formula. The integration is supposed to be from minus infinity to plus infinity. But then, because this is only positive quantity, it's not, it's sorry, non-zero for x greater than zero. I change the limit for, from a to infinity. And then we substitute the formula. It's shown in red. And then x is a scaling factor, is a scaling coming from the definition of the expected value. The red thing here is the PDF, and x is a part of the formula for finding the expectation. Now, um, to do the following, to do the, to, the, to do the integration, we can simply split the integral because x is the variable. We have a over b is going to go outside the integration because it's always constant. So, you know, this exponential has two terms. We have splitted them. One goes outside the integration. This p also goes outside the integration. What remains is a variable x because this is going to be integrated. Now we can use our formula. We compare to it. If you compare with the formula, you'll find out that if you compare these two together, you'll find c equals to minus 1 over b. So this is specifically for this example in hand. Now I will use this, where c as answer, where c is equal to minus 1 over b, and then substitute. Then we got, uh, we got the answer for this part. So to go from here to here, we're just applying uh, the formula, and we got e to the power minus cx. Remember that outside we have a over b. And then we kept this outside. And this now terms e to the power minus e to the power c of x is shown in this term. And then we substitute the other parts of the integration. This is straightforward substitution. If you do it right, you can pause the video and, and just do the substitution. You will end up with a plus b. So we made it in general. For any exponential distribution, the average value will be a plus b. Okay, so for the exponential distribution, okay, we have b will control the decay, and a is the starting point, and then, of course, the average will be always a plus b. We can do a special case where a equal to 5, for example, and b equal to 3. The average is going to be 8. 
Now, we have done the expected value of a random variable. We can do the expected value of a function of a random variable. So if we have x as a random variable and then we operate, we come up with a new random variable y. What's y? It's some operation on x. It's g of x. So the question is, for example, if y is defined to be x squared, what would be the expected value of y given that the x probability of x equal to so we have three possible values for x this is x it could be 0 minus 1 or plus 1 and they are all with probability of one third so this is the the pdf one third for all of course you can tell that the pdf or the expected value of x is going to be clearly 0 but the question is what is the expected value of y so if we think about it y we'll have probability of 0 with a one third because this is x equal to 0 is going to give you y equal to 0 but both of these together once you squared you get y equal to 1 so this is why we have two thirds here so we can do this manually then we can find the expected value of y now uh, we have seen the example of operation on random variables so the we can define the answer to be the expected value of a function of random variable for the two cases continuous and discrete the only thing you do here before we were we were scaling by x or xi here now we have to scale by the function of x so the pdf remains the same it's the original pdf of x it's not y it's the same original probability of of x but then the scaling would be after after the operation so in the previous example we had y squared so let's proceed with some examples okay let's do this example expectation of a function of random variable given that the voltage is really distributed with a equal to 0 and b equal to 5 find the expected value of the power over 1 ohm resistance we can pick the Rayleigh distribution from the formulas set of formulas that we have so this is I got this from the appendix or this is a general form for Rayleigh distributed for the special case where a equal to 0 and b equal to 5 we're going to just to substitute for a and b and this is the the voltage distribution as given from the question remember that power and voltage are related and because we have one ohm resistance the power will be related to the expected value of the voltage squared so the question in in a sense is saying find the expected value of the voltage squared now we can find the expected value of v squared by multiplying v squared by the following expression so we have v squared times v we have v cube and the remaining parts remain the same we are integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity but remember that the function is zero before so our integration is starting from zero so this is the setup of the problem if you can do this you are in good shape and then the remaining part is to execute the integration to execute the integration we're going to do a change of variable okay so basically we're going to define uh, v squared over 5 equal to zeta the blue here is defined to be zeta so if you take the differential so if you differentiate both sides you get 2 v dv divide by 5 equal to d zeta okay from that you can reformat this and get dv only by uh, uh, 5 over 2 v d zeta so then the green will be replaced with the green and the blue will be replaced by the blue we go from here to here if you are careful a little bit now how do we solve x times e to the minus x the exponential scaled by x you can do it by integration by parts but remember now this this is not the same variable as we have here this is the var variable that we use to have in um, our math it's not the voltage so uh, alternatively you can use the appendix where we can use the same formula we had used before to do the integration our focus here is not just the execution of the integration our focus is to be able to set up the problem correctly but of course as engineer you should be able to use uh, whatever uh, integration formula you are given for the for the example in hand we found that that the expected value of v squared is going to be 5 you can do that at your own time you can pause the video and execute the integration the last part we would like to do in this first video is to do the conditional expectation 
similarly just like we have the definition of expectation we have the conditional expectation all you have to do is to use the conditional pdfs or conditional probability and then the result will be what we call the conditional expectation we can also have range conditioning just like we had before so if we define an event beta to be less than or equal to a given value b the pdf we have found the pdf so if you want to find the conditional uh, expectation with that range all you need to do is to substitute the conditional pdf so you come here again and you replace this in that position so the integration limit now because it's it's going to be zero after b we stopped at b and everything is just remains the same okay so this is the expected value of x for a given range you can think of these just as examples there's nothing much about conditional expectation other than you substitute the conditional pdf or the conditional probability so if you want to have a closed form formula here is the formula that can be used for the conditional expectation for the range conditional expectation okay i'll leave you with this practice a random variable x has a density function given we're giving the pdf and the question is find the expectation find the mean so please execute the integration okay and then just write the answer down this is a simple integration because we have polynomial and i hope you get the answer correct okay if you want to verify your answer please sketch this formula sketch the function between two and six and verify your answer please note down your answer in the comment section and let's compare our answers see you in coming videos thank you for watching